Aaron Silvers, ADL. Jeff Tillett, we, Fort Learning. <laughs> we've been trying to sit down and actually do this on tape. We obviously have a lot of conversations offline. I'm squirrely. And, and I know. <laughs> Where could we go with this? But, you know, I appreciate you sitting down and talking to me. You've been saying you've been pretty busy. What the heck you been up to? Well, I've been doing a whole lot of community building around uh, Project Tin Can, or the Tin Can API. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing the road show with that, just connecting with people, getting people excited about it, kind of. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, there's a lot for for me. It's a lot to talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, this is the we're finally getting to what I call the fun part of what's been probably about a starting in at least 2009, if not the end of 2008. So we're talking about like a three or four year journey to mm. get to this point where we actually have something that we could start like really rolling out and, right. and doing and so you know the idea that we're re we're at, we're going to a next generation of scorn right uh, is like you know there's a whole industry here that, you know that's represented by this conference and other conferences that we've been to as well that you know they're they're, they're we, sh we we needed to do this years ago and now we're finally getting to it so, so you're not having to twist their arm they're ready well, there's there is some there's always some arm twi arm twisting because you know change makes people a little bit nervous, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And especially when you have a business and it's, now you have a a business that you can you understand really well and it's right. fairly successful. Then all of a sudden, that somebody throws a wrinkle in, into the you know your business plan, it's probably a little bit you know it, it, I think I, I get some goosebumps, and, you yeah, know, some, some nervous brow, sweaty brows. But uh, uh, more often than not, though, um, this has been. The, the reception to what we're talking about, even at a high-level conceptual stage at this point, is really, really warm. It's really, really exciting. Um, I love it. I mean, yeah. this this is what we've been working for. So It's fun to do things that affect so many people, right? And a little scary maybe sometimes, but do yeah. you think people are... Uh, we, you think maybe we've been needing this? I mean... Yeah, I think, I mean, I think maybe we have. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right. not entirely sure. I think... Uh, well, for one thing, I'm mean, like I, I can remember being a content developer, you know, working in Flash years ago, in the way long, long mm -hmm. ago. Um, and uh, I remember that, you know, it wasn't very slowly that all, all of our customers uh, were going to Storm Systems, and this is back on around 2001, 2002. And we we downloaded the manual from ADL and. We looked through the Scorm 1.2 manual, mm -hmm. and you know I thought it was a pretty smart guy. And I worked for a really smart guy, and he worked for other really really smart guys. And we sat down and we, we spent two weeks pouring through the, the manual, and we couldn't figure out how to make our content work with the Scorm system. There was nothing mm -hmm. in there that just explicitly said this is how this is how you right. do it. Um, and we punted. We were like, we can't adopt this. Like, you know, we there was no one to really ask. We didn't even know right. who to ask for help. Right. Um, and one by one, we lost our clients. And in 2003, it shuttered its doors. Mm. When later that summer, when ADL called me and they're like, yeah, you know, we we'd like you to do content prototyping for us to figure, you know, for for Scorn. Uh, I sat there and I remember to myself, I'm like. Anything that could, any technology that can completely displace an organization by not adopting right. it is something that I absolutely need to know. But that stays in my head mm -hmm. uh, pretty much every morning that I wake up. Um, that what we, whatever it is that we do, needs to be made easier, needs to be made more accessible, uh, needs to have a lot more supportive tools, needs to have a community around it as we launch it to make sure that. If you're in that place where, like, you don't, like, you know that your job, your career, your business is on the line, you know, you have to still assert yourself, but there's going to be help available to you, and yeah. like that, that, I'm, I'm very mindful of that. Oh, I think people have been reaching out for quite a while, looking for some answers and exactly what that, what it means for learning, what it means for the business, and how to to make that effective. So yeah. that's that's kind of your guys' role, right? Well. You know, we, we have we I think we wear a lot of different. We wear one big hat, but it's got a lot of points. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, our primary stakeholder, you know, the people that we answer to is the U.S. Department of Defense, and uh, we we serve pretty much to to make sure that 
that we are providing for the for the, our soldiers and our war fighters that you know that we're getting them the kind of learning experiences that they need and uh, it's not so much that we're really gatekeepers to that process but we are we, we do consult you know in terms of like you know what are the best practices that are out there and we do a lot of research and we do a lot of homework before we make decisions because yeah. you know the stakes that we have to answer to are very very high um, but that said the solutions to a lot of the problems that uh, the, the challenges that we're facing uh, are not all within the U.S. Department of Defense. They're not all within ADL. They're really out there in the community. They're really, and a lot of it is in the marketplace. And yeah. so, it's a balancing act between matching our needs on one hand and you know all the solutions and innovations that are out in the marketplace. And how do we marry the two? So that we can have something bigger than either either side could really envision. Yeah. Well, so what are you excited about? What really excites you about Project Tin Can? Uh, kind the, of the take-home mess. What's the sweet spot for the, you? The sweet spot for me is that there is a whole lot of things that I think uh, the creatives among us, you know, the the, the influencers and in organizations. Uh, in terms of like you know shaping messages and, and, and just creating experiences for people that to, that you know propel the business forward um, that they've wanted to do for a very long time they've had the ideas in their head they've even been able to probably explain their ideas maybe even in pa on paper or in, in, in presentations or whatever um, the challenge has been that they haven't had the technology just nearly available mm -hmm. to them to be able to do that. They haven't had the infrastructure support, they haven't had the, the business case you know, to do it, whatever. And what I see in what we're doing is taking, a lot of it comes from the Project in Can work that was done by Rust Software last year. Um, that research, that, you know, all the, that contribution, the interviews that they did, that, that and the Let's See White Papers from 2008, you know, um, and a number of different interactions that we've had for the last probably four or five years uh, as an organization demonstrate that there are some real specific needs that, that people have. One of them is mobile, for sure, right? I mean, right. like, you know, these devices are ubiquitous. They are with us, and, they, and they're with us all the time, and they're right. very highly personalized. And so, you know, the fact that we have to do learning activities, but they, but but because they're mitigated by LMS and because they're bound by the, the structure of our, our, our standards, um, force them to do it on a desktop computer, you know, in their workplace, you know, whatever, um, is very confining, you know, and, and it, it, it requires bending around, you know, these, these activities versus like, you know, meeting the needs of the learner where they're at. Um, you know, I love that you said that. Yeah. So you've been, Leading up to this point, where I, I think you're kind of at that pivotal point in this, where we're now starting to see, okay, it's here it comes, it's here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you see this next year going? Is there going to be a lot of people jumping on right away? Are you going to help hold their hand a little bit, or is there people that, out there that are experts that are going to be able to help that, uh, people make this jump? Well, I, I'm, I, I have spent a lot of time designing this experience myself in terms of like how is this going to roll um, getting to this point required a lot of uh, some hand holding some budging a lot of schmoozing if you will mm -hmm. uh, and just really just kind of like talking to people where they're at right. about you know what is it that they are looking for what our ideas might we be able to work on together um, and kind of building the fellowship of the ring, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. and then and and now we're ready to go on that journey together. Right. And uh, the way that that's going to work is that basically we're we're going to have a kickoff in uh, in the beginning of April, and uh, I think weekly we're we're going to have uh, a couple different mailing lists depending on the different types of ways that people want to participate in, and we're going to have weekly phone calls that you know take one topic at a time that you know we identify in our specification uh, as it is that uh, needs some work needs some love and we're going to focus our energies on that and kind of work those things until they're done and keep on going until yeah. basically we, re re we release the summer awesome I, I like that um, you know a lot of great things die at the white paper right the yeah. research is done right the re it's yeah. put out there and 
not everybody reads that stuff. You know, this, this the engineers, the geeks, right? Yeah. But so bringing it into reality, that's really the key, right? Well, so so there's this notion. There's this guy Peter Thiel, who's the co-founder of PayPal, and he gave a speech in Harvard. And I'm I'm going to wind up a little bit here, and then I'll wind back and forth <laughs> to the ground. I know you're I looking. Trust you. I know you're looking. I trust you. <laughs> so he gave this speech on the what, what he called the definite and the indefinite future. And, the, and uh, you think about the space race in the '60s, right? Um, America had a definite future vision of going putting a man on the moon. We had no idea how we were going to do it, right? right? But we were like, by God, we're going to the moon, mm-hmm. and the, it was crazy. But it was a flag planted out in front. And it was a beacon that everybody could point to and say, that's where we're going. Right. Right? Um, that's a very definite future. When you think about uh, an indefinite future, you think about people and organizations that, you know, they don't necessarily know what where they need to be investing, you know, mm-hmm. their uh, energies and their attention and their capital. Uh, so they they kind of place, hedge their bets against a, what they would call a portfolio of solutions, right? right? So we do lots of little tiny things and then see what sticks. We do lots right. of little tiny things more and see what sticks. Well, ADL's, you know, in 1997, 98, when ADL came into existence, they had a very definite future. Of like, this is score, we're putting the chips down here, bam, everybody goes to it, right? right. And not everybody knew how we were going to get there, but we did get there. Um, around 2004, I think there was an inflection point where we're like, okay, we've we refined what we did, we've improved we've improved it to the best that we know how to do, um, and now we're going to kind of let the diffusion of innovation happen, and we're going to kind of see where the market goes. Hmm. And over the last, you know, well, in 2004, so we're talking about eight years, um, right? Eight? Yeah, that's eight. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we've seen where the market went, right? right. And and. Uh, in the meantime, ADL has made lots of small, little research projects, lots of little investments. Uh, even in the, even as we considered revisiting a new version of SCORM, we looked at a number of different uh, specifications, a number of different learning technologies that were out there. Um, we made a lot of small bets. We were participating on phone calls. We're we're we're, we're parts of other standards organization groups. We're, we're we're doing the due diligence. But the work, but that homework's been done, and we're and we're very confident in the decision that that the Tin Can API is our first way forward. There are going to be lots of other services that are part of that make up a next generation right. score, but our first one, Tin Can API. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about what's going on. It, it's very uh, kind of from an observer being in this industry for a while. I think it's been a long time coming, and obviously you've been working on it for a long time. So, and and, and things have changed since you started, right? So they're and they're continuing to change. So well, a- absolutely, I mean, you know, even the approach that we're taking, uh, even in a standards effort, you have to consider that in 1997, Clinton, President Clinton, signed ADL kind of into existence. In '98, the effort actually started, and. It took a, a really up until 2004 for a viable version of SCORM to really kind of start getting a you know massive adoption. Right. That's six years. Yeah. It's really six years. We're talking about from really you know for all intents and purposes from the outside from the beginning of 2011 to now. Hmm. And by June we're going to roll out. Yeah. And the team of engineers that are that is doing this in the in the beginning, we were talking about 45 full-time dedicated engineers in oh. order to make a, a version of SCORM. Hmm. We probably have maybe two to three full-time engineers right now working on next generation SCORM. And I'm not an engineer. Huh. So um, the fact that we can move more agilely, we're smaller, mm-hmm. we're dealing with uh, ser- web services instead of building entire architectures. I mean, not that right. uh, a web service has no architecture at all. It's actually complex. But, right. Um, but we're pivoting very fast, and our intention is to continue to pivot very, very fast as needs emerge. And if what we're doing as a, in this direction doesn't work for people anymore, or we find that we need to do something else in addition to it, then we'll start on doing yeah. something else, you know, as well, you know, right. and because these things can. We're looking at making sure that the data can hop around wherever it right. needs to go. We're not concerned on the fact that we have one solution and we're put in and we're doing it. But you're you're matching the rhythm of business right now. The, we're trying the speed and we're, well, which things happen, and I think we're all 
right? That's what's happening right now, and technology is moving this fast, and and we've learned to be more agile when we when we produce things and when we're uh, you know building things, right? We a have to absolutely. I mean, you know the the the, the business cases that we started going with um, are still there. You know, like the the the, use, the reasons why we're doing this are still exist. We yeah. have a lot of catching up to do. Once we've caught up, the the landscape's going to change, yeah. and what we do next with after that will have to change with it. And we have uh, a long term vision of a personalized uh, assistant for learning, um, but we're it's going to take it's taken us a lot of steps yeah. for us to get there. Yeah. And, and what we're doing with next generation of SCORM is is that first step from where we've been the to where we need to go. Yeah, the foundation. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time sitting down with me. Um, and we'll be tracking what you're doing. So I appreciate uh, I appreciate you guys driving this. I'm, I'm excited about it personally, and I, well, I see the need for it. So it's exciting to see. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, so, Mojo Tiller. Thank you. All right.